Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to have some fun. I'm going to paint an orc. <laughs> I'm surprised it's taken me this long to get into doing this blokey, to be honest. Now the orcs, they're from Warhammer 40,000. They are a race of sentient, barely, uh, fungus. And they go around kicking everything they can find. They're a warlike species that basically exists to have fun and smash stuff. And they are a lot of fun to paint. Now... They are a horde army, which means you're going to paint a lot of these guys. So here's one way that you can do that really quickly and still get some pretty cool results. Now I've put him on a slightly larger base than usual, and I've put him on one of these textured bases from Games Workshop, because he's going to be for my Shadow Wars Armageddon Warband. Ordinarily he'd be on a slightly smaller base, but that's much of a much. It also gives me an opportunity, we're going to paint this base at the same time, so you can see how I would do that too. So my colours I've got... I've used Mournfang Brown to base coat them. Now the spray, you know, obviously that's a good starting point, but most of the colors are going to go pretty well over the top of this, so that's why I've used this brown. The bonus to this as well is that if I miss anywhere, then brown doesn't stand out too much. Like if I miss a little bit of skin or there's something left in the corner of one of his guns and it's brown, it looks dirty and rusty and blech, whatever. It doesn't stand out on an orc. Good choice. I'm then going to do all of his metal lead belcher, and I'll paint that on the base at the same time. The gun and his big chainsaw chopper dealie, they will be that. And I'm going to stipple that on mostly, be quite brutal with it, and just sort of jam it into place. His skin, wag flesh, no great surprise there. For his trousers, now I'm playing blood axes. And blood axes are the guys who've had the most contact with the Imperium of Man which means they've seen things like uh, camouflage patterns and stuff like that. They like to think they're clever, and they like using camo patterns as well, but they don't quite understand how they work. So <laughs> I'm going to use Jokero Orange here as the base for a sort of camo over his trousers. I'm going to paint his shirt, Mephiston Red, and teeth and claws and any other little bits of material like this fabric on his arm here, I will paint in Zandru Dust to start with. So, first things first, we're actually going to get the metal on them. Now, in painting this on, I'm actually using one of the dry brushes, because it's got stiff, quite speckly sort of bristles, that when I just jab this on where I want the metal to go, it's going to give me a rough pattern. It'll cover pretty well, you know, this uh, lead belcher is a fairly good colour for this, but anywhere that it leaves that base coat still showing, it'll give me a rough, random sort of edge to it. So this is not too tidy. And like I said, the object here is that I want this to look battered and worn and, ugh, you know, orcs don't spend very long cleaning their guns, let's say. Now that metal's been applied, and you can see how the rough edge of the brush has given me quite a cool sort of battered effect to it. Now, your mileage may vary here, you might want to do a slightly cleaner looking material, in which case, just use a little bit more paint, and take your time as you're putting it on the model. I like what I've got here though, and it's a little bit quicker, especially if you're painting these, uh, these as a horde. So next colour to go on is skin, and that's nice and easy, I've got my wag flesh, just a little bit of water, and this might need two coats in some places as it goes on, so just take your time, go around, and if you cover over any of these areas, like this fabric part, for example, don't worry, because we're going to paint over the top of most of these anyway. Now, painting the skin doesn't take too much. As you can see, it's still drying as I've put on that second coat. But not a problem, because while that's doing its thing, we're going to go ahead and do parts of his trousers, which aren't going to touch one another. So this way you can speed up these batch painting processes. So I'm going to use Jacaro Orange, and I've got my little crappy stippling brush here, that I'm just gonna get some paint on the brush and start jamming it in random splotches on his trousers. Now, with the orange, because I want this to stand out, I'm gonna do quite a lot of this in this crazy orange color. A couple of splodges of Jokero orange have gone on, and as you can see, where there's any straps or anything, I've gone over them. I haven't come to an edge of detail, like for example his boot under here, and stopped, I've just kept going. Because if you try and be tidy near the edge of a detail with these camo patterns, you'll find that it looks a little bit more unnatural. So you see I've gone quite 
quite mad. <laughs> but while that dries, again, we're going to go to a spot where we can start painting something else in the meantime. And I'm going to do Mephiston Red on his shirt. So as ever, just a little bit of water and dabbing this on. Now in this case you want to be a little bit more tidy. You know, you want to be careful with the straps on here because if you can just paint this area without having to touch up the brown straps, we can leave them Mournfang brown and that's a nice and quick way of getting large units done, you know, being able to ignore the base coat. So his red shirt's drying, his trousers are drying, his skin's almost finished drying, but there is one detail I actually completely forgot about, and that's going to be his armor plates. So this big belly plate here, the thing on his back, and the shoulder pad I've glued on as well. Now I'm going to pick a brown tone, I'm going to use XV88. Uh, reason being is I don't want this to go too far from the sort of normal camo colors. Um, orcs we know they're a bit crazy, so that's why I've used orange on his trousers, but I'm going to use a slightly more neutral tone to do his armor, because I don't want that to clash too much with the bright red shirt as well. So, as ever, this is a nice simple operation. Bit of paint, a little bit of water on my brush already there, helps me smooth it out. And then we'll just start bucketing this on. So there's the XV88 on all of those armor plates. And here you can see I've left, because there's an edge here, I think. And I like if it's not all one big block of color around his belly. Looks more like a belly plate then, which is a little bit more orky, if you ask me. Now the last step I'm going to do is these bits of Zandri dust. So any bits of stray material, his teeth and his claws. Now that Zandri dust is on in all of the places where I want it to be. But can you believe there is one last step I actually forgot? And that is the second color for his camo pattern on his trousers. Now I'm going to use Eshin Grey, it's a nice dark grey. You could probably use black for something like this though. And same as before, I'm just going to blotch this on, mostly randomly, but I want to try and break up some of that brown and make sure I've not got any areas of orange that are too large. All our base coats have been applied and in true Orky fashion he's looking kind of bonkers. I've gone ahead and I've tidied up some of those little leather areas with a bit more Mournfang brown, and I've done the same to his boots. You could black them in if you wanted to, but, you know, we're talking about ways that you could paint a hundred orcs. So, I'm going to leave them brown, to be honest. Now, it's time to go ahead and give this guy his wash, and to nobody's great surprise, that will involve good old Agrax with the shade. And I've got quite a big brush for this one, because I'm going to bucket it on. There's no need to be careful with this. So we're going to go around, paint this on the whole miniature, and when I say the whole miniature, I mean all of it. You want to get his base here too, because this is going to help bring together that uh, sort of mottled metal effect. With that wash mostly dry, you can see what a big effect it has on all of those metal areas, and what it does to the shading on the rest of the miniature. It brings it all down, and he doesn't look quite so psychotically cartoony anymore, which is good. Now what I'm going to do is areas that I want to make look a little bit darker still, like on this uh, base plate thing that he's standing on, I'm actually going to go ahead and add a little bit more wash. I'm going to use Noln Oil this time. And that's going to give me a really, really dark metal, but it's going to look super cool when it's done. Okay, so I'm going to quickly nut around there. And I might do a little bit on his uh, chainsaw chopper, call it what you will. Now while I'm on the subject of these alternative bases, I've got here a couple that were painted by my lovely wife. Now she's gone for these resin base toppers. And you can see, instead of just doing them in a simple flat color, she's broken them up a little bit more to make them sort of these miniature dioramas. There's this sort of bluey shade to, I guess that stonework there, where you can see the rubble chips have come away. And then there's this big metallic piece, sort of a decking slate or something over the top of that. And she's used it to break up the color a little and add some more to this quite dark miniature. It looks really cool. And there's another one here, you know, similar sort of idea where she's got just some additional warmth on the base, which helps add to that, that miniature. Now these will be painted in exactly the same way as I'm doing this one here at the moment. But you can do plenty with these base toppers or these molded plastic bases. So have a think about what you want to do to add to your miniature with these. 
Now once your bases are all dry enough to handle, the next thing to do is to get on to painting that skin, and I've gone straight for Warboss Green. This is quite a bright colour when compared to what we've just done, but I like it because it adds a fair bit of contrast straight away, and you'll be able to see these highlights from right across the table. Now the cool thing with this is it adds back some green that we might have lost by using the Agrax Earthshade. Now you don't want to be too careful with this. The idea is that you're just quickly bashing on to the really high points of the muscles. So you're really not doing much more than sort of an impressionist version of how to highlight an orc here. <laughs> okay, the idea is that this is nice and quick. And you see it's not fancy, but you're going to have... Let's say you're an orc army, you're going to have probably a hundred or so guys on the table. You don't want to spend forever painting every single one of them. So just highlight all the places that you would see that the wash has run away from, and anywhere that you want to bring out and make look that bit brighter again. So under the eye sockets and around the face is a good one to jab a bit of character back onto the model. Make sure you do those big bottom lips, those look cool on the orcs. And as you can see, it's otherwise just a case of Impressionism, you know, we're not being fancy here. Now when it comes to highlighting his armor, there's kind of two ways you can go about this. Either I would use Zamisi Desert over the top of what we've gone for so far, and just edge highlight how we typically would, you know, using the edge of my brush to tease along the edges of those uh, details and bring them out, give them a nice sharp highlight there. But instead, something that'll be a little bit quicker, I'm going to use Rhinox Hide and we're going to sort of fake some chipping effects on this. The benefit with this is that you can really be quite sloppy with it and it will look all the more realistic. Like the worse you do, <laughs> the better it looks. So I'm just going to pick some spots, be quite random with my brush strokes here, and sort of flick away towards the edge of things. So I'm using brown because that's a good color for sort of that faked out rusty effect. So you see, instead of flicking in on the model, I'm going to go where I want the line to start and then drag to the edge. And I'm just going to go around just a few places. So rather than taking you know, my time and being careful with this like I would an edge highlight, we're going to be quite, uh, quite generous and quite quick with this. And now that those chunks are applied, I'm going to get a little bit of lead belcher. And instead of covering them over entirely, what we're going to do is leave some of that brown color and just fake out that chipping towards the edges. And then we get this nice, and this is a real sort of sharp, cartoony way of doing this. Okay, this isn't realistic, but it will look really good on these, uh, you know, these quickly painted orcs. So you just go around and anywhere that you've put these little dabs of brown, just pop in a little bit of this uh, lead belcher. Don't go to the edges. And you've got this cool chipping effect, which is really easy. And frankly, looks great on any orc that you're painting. Now at the same time, I've just quickly gone around and anywhere that I'd missed with the metallic earlier, I've just picked out a couple of belt buckles. So you can use this as a sort of a last stage tidy up. Now, honestly, for my own miniatures, this is ready to put on the table. You know, I would black around the edge of the base here and put him down quite happily like that because he's going to look the business when he's got 80 friends on the table. If we just quickly you know, get a shot of that, you can see how effective that can be. So what I'll do instead, though, we're going to go a little bit brighter. We'll finish off his teeth and claws. And for that, we need Shabti Bone. So as ever, I've got quite a fine brush for this one because I'm going to get into some fairly dinky little details. But what I'm going to do is where the sort of base of his tooth is, I'm going to avoid that, start about halfway up and draw my paint towards the tip of his tooth. So that'll give me sort of that grungy corner. You know, it looks like he hasn't brushed in a while, which is appropriate to orcs. I'm going to leave the others mostly, except for this other little corner one here. So let's do his fingernails in much the same way. Just beep, 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 beep. Got a little bit overboard there. But it won't matter. You know, a lot of this is about choosing when to just leave something. <laughs> so, you know, you can be quite, uh, quite precise, quite finicky, but I'm not gonna. And 
one last bit of detail. I'm just going to get some, uh, what is this, Balthazar gold. Any old sort of brassy color that you've got will work for this. I'm just going to brass in a couple of details to break up some of that metallic. Finish this off. They're just on his helmet there and I'll do the pen and a stick grenade too. And this just helps add a little bit extra sort of visual interest to the miniature. You don't need to go too far with this though. Then last but not least, I've got a little bit of Necron compound here and I'm just going to lightly dry brush along the floor on this deck plate here, just to bring out some of those higher details, and make it shine a little bit compared to his weapons because I don't want it to look quite as scungy by comparison. Now that we've got a little bit of Necron compound on the base, it's brightened that up a fair bit while still leaving all his weaponry looking gungy and horrible, which is about right for an orc. And with that, he's finished. I mean, as I've pointed out, this isn't one that's going to look fantastic. You know, this isn't going to win any painting competitions, but as a way to get a ton of orcs on the table really quickly and still have them look, you know, pretty cracking on the table, this is a great way to get through all of those mobs you're going to have to paint. Now, there are plenty of ways that you could bring this up from here. You know, if you were to be a little bit more careful, spend some more time on the highlights. That's one way, you know, instead of going quite so blocky. Uh, edge highlighting with, the, with a different color. You know, there are plenty of ways that you can be nicer. But this is a quick way of getting things done. As well, you could also swap out plenty of different colors. Like you might decide you want to do green on the trousers instead, you know, give them a more realistic camo effect. Maybe if you're painting goths, for example, you could just fill all those in with black and give them a quick dry brush of some gray before you give them the wash to, you know, add a little bit more depth to that dark, dingy, horrible <laughs> goth color scheme. But for my guys, you know, I'm quite happy to put him on the table. He's ready to rock and roll. He's going to swat some stupid Umi gets, hopefully. I don't have particularly good luck playing with my Hawks, if I'm honest. But as ever, guys, hopefully you found something useful there. You got any questions, comments, or suggestions that you want to see for the next video, just chuck them on down there in the comments, or you can get in touch with me on my Facebook or Twitter. And as ever, guys, thank you very much for your time, and enjoy the rest of your day.